Hi, so this is a video for the bridge section of REM Everybody Hurts. Um, so those chords, you could play them as five chords or as bar chords. So the difference is, so the first one is F sharp um, five chord, which would be just two notes. Uh, second fret, low E string, which is E, F, F sharp, E, F, F sharp. And then this note, fourth fret on the A string, and you'd just be having those two notes ringing out. This it's called a five chord because one, two, three, four, five, do, re, mi, fa, so. One, two, three, four, five. It's a fifth fifth note of the scale that the chord comes from. So um, if you're going to do two notes. Pretty much muting these top four strings with the underside of my first finger. So my first finger is fretting that low E string. Of course, it's covering or going across all these other strings, and then I'm going to let it touch these other strings without pressure, just touching it to mute them. And so then I've got this sound. Or I could do the bar chord. Oh, sorry, not bar chord. Or I could do the power chord, which is a three note chord, which is the root, the fifth, and the root again, the octave. And yeah, three note chord, uh, same two notes, plus little finger on the fourth fret of the next string, the D string. And the, the principle would be the same. You'd be strumming aiming at these three, these low three strings, and these top three strings would be muted by the underside of the first finger, whilst the first finger was just fretting that low E string and crossing all the other strings, and you'd let it rest on it. So it takes perhaps a while to get the technique, the balance right of actually fretting the string with the tip of the pretty much the tip of the first finger and then getting the rest of the first finger to actually lie on the strings, the rest of the strings to mute them. And then that, either the five chord or the, or the um, power chord is the same for all the other chords that we'll be playing. So let's just go through the chords. So first of all we've got F, what will I be playing? I think I'll be playing the power chords. So first of all we've got F sharp, then B, and power chords don't have a major or minor because they don't have a third, so basically I'll just be saying that's F sharp, that's B. Those are the first two chords, so B as you can see as you take that shape, upper set of strings, and now I'm on the 2nd fret A string, 4th fret D string, 4th fret G string, and so it'll be the top two strings which will be muted by the underside of the first finger. Um, that change happens three times. Then you go to C, which is you take when you're on B, you just take it up a fret, and you've got C. And third fret, first finger, third fret of the A string, and then fourth, fifth fret of the D string with the third finger, and fifth fret of G string with the little finger. Same principle, these top two strings are muted. So that's C, and then you go to G. So you take the shape down, and you've got the G. So just like you had F sharp there, one fret up, because each fret is a semitone. So, so far we've got F sharp, B, that change happens three times. Then C, G, that change happens once. Then we got C, C over B. we're just going to play one beat on. So this C over B, if I was doing it in this way, with, I would do, there's my power chord, then I would swap, my first finger would move down to the second fret of the A string, and I would have my little finger now play the fifth fret of the D string, because I find that stretch too much. 
However, I'd probably actually play this. C, C over B. I play it as an open chord. That way I'm just fretting the one string, the A string in the second fret. And the D string, the G string, and the B string are ringing out. I want to avoid that top E, yeah? So, how I'm avoiding that is a mixture. It's mainly with my rhythm hand I'm aiming quite precisely at these middle four strings. But also, as a sort of safety measure, I've actually brought my first finger, the first digit, or this digit where it joins the hand, up to the neck. It's touching the bottom of the neck and I'm actually touching that top E string with it. So that I've got that one muted. Then I go down to an A minor. Okay. So, rhythm wise. It's 6, 8. And so what I'm doing there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my uh, essential, my fundamental rhythmic pattern, strumming pattern, is down, up, down. And then that gets repeated for the second part of the bar. So a full bar, which is six eighths and a six beats in a bar, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's down, up, down, down, up, down. So that's the essential or fundamental strumming pattern. Down, up, down, down, up. So what you're getting by doing that, rather than going one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, you could do that, where you're just strumming down, up, down, up, and emphasizing the beats of the threes, because this is a triplet feel. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it's just the way it's written for ease of writing it in standard notation. It's called six, eight, and so we count it in sixes. But to emphasize that triplet feel of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, that, um, to emphasize that, I do this strumming pattern of down, up, down, down, up, down, so that I've got a down on each of the first beats of the threes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So each group of threes, which is in a bar, the beat one and beat four, one, two, three, four. I've got a downstroke on which emphasizes that that uh, that beat and the whole pulse, and that's what you want that beat emphasized. So that's my strumming pattern, and now I'll go through the whole piece. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, three, four, five, six. Okay, so just to point out what I did there at the end, uh, the timing on the C chord, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, a whole bar, and then you've got a bar of six, eight, split in split between the C and the C over B. So you've got three beats on the C, one, two, three, four, five, six, and three beats on the C over B. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, then one, two, three, four, five, six, whole bar on the A minor, and then one, uh, just that first beat of the next bar, because you've got a rest there of one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you're back into a verse. And then you see how I did that mute. If I'm playing the A like this as a bar with my first.
last finger barring the D string, G string, and B string. Although I'm really um, just to follow what I was doing, I'm really playing the A as a power chord. That is just the A string, the D string, and the G string are the ones that I'm really aiming for. And then because I've got my other fingers free, as soon as I strum, I'm releasing pressure with the first finger, still touching strings, but I've released the pressure, so it's muting some. And then these ones, well, certainly the lower one, which it can't mute, which the first finger can't mute, I'm putting my other fingers on the strings to, to mute them. Um, I suppose you could do it like that, but I mean with this hand, muting with this hand, but in this case, this is, I think, a quicker way to do the mute. And it's a good technique to get used to used in other things. So so that's going through the whole piece. Hope that's okay.